Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're doing a couple of different things. We're here in the greenhouse. You can probably see the little kiddie pools behind me and the bags of sand. We're gonna start off today by putting together a couple of small sand boxes for the kids. And then when we're done with that, we're gonna head out into the garden to do some cleanup because it is 52 degrees outside and sunny today. And that means in here, it is, Oh, 70 degrees now. So it's just wonderful in here. You can probably see Benjamin does not have his coat on because it's very comfortable. How excited, how excited are you for your sandbox? Percent. A million percent. And he's brought out a box of army. And, a, and beads. And beads. And, and the holes. Yes, we did cut those holes so that you could use that as a, a mask of sorts and still see. That was a long time ago. So we've got two small kiddie pools right here. What are those, like four by four maybe? And then we've got eight bags of sand. And I don't know if that's gonna be quite enough, but we're gonna just, we'll play it by ear here. In fact, one of you guys reminded me that I had these little kiddie pools in the loft in the barn, which you guys have such good memories. I didn't even remember they were up there. So thank you for that reminder. It was after we decorated the tree in the Hartley and that day, I knew I had some prep work to do on the tree, like hanging the real heavy ornaments and getting that all set before the kids came and helped me. So I thought, well, to kind of preoccupy at least Samantha, I thought putting together just a little bowl of sand with some fairy garden pieces would be entertaining and boy, was it ever. And they just played in that sand, little itty bitty sandbox for hours. And then Samantha wants to go out there every single day to play in it. So I thought, oh, this is going to be perfect. Uh, so one of you guys had mentioned, well, you have those kiddie pools. You should just put some sand in them in your greenhouse. Brilliant. Now, this is where the cats sleep because it stays warm in here and they have the ability to go in and out as they please. So we are going to be covering these boys. These are not your litter boxes. We'll be covering these with boards every night. And thankfully they're small. We've got a piece of plywood in the barn that I'll just cut to size and we can just pop a lid on each one of them. So they should be good. But anyway, this is a pretty straightforward project. Erin is going to help me move this table out so we can just kind of snug the pools up against the edge. That way we can still pull the hoses in and out and they're not right out in the middle of the, of the road here. Let's do it, Benjamin. Yeah. help yeah, you're welcome. those bags are heavy 50 uh that goes to my patio lights up here you want me to zip tie that back uh, i don't know i'll mess with it later okay all right benjamin should we go get you some kneeling pads in case you don't want to get actually in it i'm gonna go grab you some he doesn't need sand he just needs a door to play with yeah <gasps> did you lock the door on me yep what let me unlock it okay oh can you um Oh, watch more. your hand, bud. Okay, oh, okay, grab your back. I had these on it. Did you? No, put it right here. How about that? You can take your socks and shoes off if you want. Well, that'll feel tickly. Yeah, it would. How fun. I'm thinking about taking my socks and shoes off and walking around in that, bud. You know, the beauty of having this size of reservoir is that, I mean, you can still play in the sand and do all your all your things, all the things you wanna do in it, but they're still small enough that you can scoot them around if you need to. Um, so I did think about making a bigger reservoir, kind of like the grass patch that we put in here last year, which I honestly think they're gonna get way more mileage out of this than they ever did out of that grass patch. But I thought about doing like an eight by eight and filling it with sand, but then it gets so heavy and hard to remove this is easy and we only used three bags of sand per pool cannot wait till samantha sees it she's napping right now i was hoping to do this project earlier so that i could see her reaction right when we finished but we'll get it we'll get it later how fun bud so that's pretty much all there is to this project now i'm gonna go gather up my stuff I've got a few hours of sunlight still left, at least two hours of sunlight left outside. So I'm gonna try to get as much garden cleanup as I can get done. We're gonna start here in the raised bed and um, 
I just heard a beat. Is that a truck? Not around here. Anyway, we'll start in the raised beds and clean out some bachelor's buttons and some things that I didn't get to before the snow came. And then we'll, I think we'll just move our way down the west side a bit. Let's just take a walk down this way to see what needs to be done. I'm guessing mostly just perennial cutback and or cut uh, pulling annuals. Oh, it's so beautiful out. We've got some Monarda I can cut back right there. Uh, I don't know if I'll cut my hydrangeas back or not yet. I really don't like to look at that all winter long. Maybe we will. Through here, really there's not a whole lot except for the bachelor's buttons. Uh, some carrots we pulled out but need to give to the chickens. Need to cut back our chives. Oh yeah, we just have a whole bunch of, there's iris in here, nepeta, peonies. I mean, you can barely even tell what's in here now, but some yarrow and ladies mantle. And I think we'll just work our way. Now these are cool. These are a Stokes Aster and I can cut off the top like the bloom stalks, but look at the foliage. It looks so good still. Roses still look really good. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. Great color. So that's what's gonna go down this afternoon. I will try to capture as much of it as I can and then we'll do a walkthrough in the end and I'll show you. Aren't you glad you have that kneeling pad now? Yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. Barrier. Yeah, you did do a fence barrier, didn't you? Very cool. You know what? Some more details. I think I'm gonna go grab some of those fairy garden pieces for Samantha's tub. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the size of the first sandbox put together. She's gonna love it.
All right, guys, I am gonna call it for the afternoon. I probably have time to do a tiny bit more cleanup, but the gator's full, so I wanna go get that emptied. And then I'm going to be making um, Ina Garten's winter squash soup tonight. And I'm very much so looking forward to that. So I want to go start that process and I get to use butternut squash and onions and things from our root cellar, which is really fun. If you haven't tried that recipe for winter squash soup, definitely try it. It's the best. So let's just take a little walk through what we got done this afternoon. Cut back the Monarda, which smells so good. It's such a nostalgic smell and I could smell it for the whole rest of the time I was cleaning up. It was awesome. Then just did a little raking and you know we transplanted some Brunnera. They were huge plants uh, this summer and so they're all in this area. I got those all cut back so now we can mulch. That was it for this end. I forgot to cut back the hydrangeas. I'll come back here out here and do that another day. But it's such a gift that we're able to be out here even doing any cleaning because typically in December the weather is not as favorable as it is today and when I was cutting back one of the roses I'll show you which one there were white flies just pouring out of it I've never had white flies outside <laughs> uh, I mean I think that's what it was there were a bunch of tiny white bright white flies uh, and so that's the main reason why we're doing a lot of our cleanup early like we did a bunch this fall and then I will continue working on it and I'm sure Paul and Bethany will continue working on it as we have the weather to do so because uh, we're trying to eliminate thrips mainly uh, so anyway it made me feel good to get the foliage and stuff cleaned up around that rose today but I got the bachelor's buttons pulled up I need to do a little cleanup around the edges there Benjamin and I picked some carrots cut the chives back that were in that pot and they've been in that pot for like five years and then moving out on the west side here we got done from about the fence over to the first urn which this is the most thick area of perennials and we have both iris and ladies mantle in this area which are a pain to clean out iris if you're not careful like you can pull some of the spent leaves from around the bottom and they just release really easily but if you accidentally get a hold of a, a fresher leaf it can pop the whole rhizome out of the ground it only happened to me once today so i just replanted it real quick but uh anyway getting to those earlier is usually a little bit better same with the ladies mantle so i've got a big patch of ladies mantle in here and it just it gets so soggy and it's like that now because we've had you know snow and rain but it would be like that in the spring too it's much easier to cut back when it's drier because this stuff just gums up in your pruners <laughs> it's just a total pain oh is that one of the white flies right here yeah that is do you see that it's itty bitty but it's bright white. But other than those two perennials, it was really easy. Just did some leaf cleanup. I trimmed this elderberry to where you could see the, uh, we've got a red obelisk beach right there. And this uh, is an instant karma elderberry and it just grows like crazy, <laughs> like crazy. And then I did cut back, there's a peony there. And I did just kind of a rough job on these roses. These are, I think, Royal Jubilee, David Austin roses. And I will come in and reduce their height by half from what I even left today in the spring, but they were so big and bushy and kind of overgrown that it did clean it up. And then this is the one that had all of the little white flies pouring out of it. So I might even come in and clean around the crown of the plant there, uh, but I feel like I eliminated a lot of them today. There's one flying around right there. I don't know if you can see that. Ugh. And this is where we stopped. We've got some really pretty variegated ajuga right here. I kind of want to continue on with a little more of that because it's got such great color in the winter time. And then as we have moments this winter, we'll come out and clear out more. The only things that I will probably leave alone in this space are the Caryopteris and Budlia, which uh, Caryopteris don't suffer from winter dieback as bad as Budlia do for us, uh, but it's just best to wait until those show a little bit of growth in the spring, and then you can see where to cut the plant down to. You can you know, cut it right above the first set of really strong buds. Uh, that's just better for the plants, but I'm just kind of taking a, taking a look here, and I don't think there's anything else that I will ignore this winter. Yeah, everything else I think we're good to go getting cleaned up. A couple of other really pretty things. We've got Brandywine Viburnum right here. Look at how beautiful these berries are. Hanging on too. And then the Drops of Jupiter Oregano. Looking so fresh, look at that. And then there's some Thrift right here which always maintains its beautiful grassy leaf canopy. And the whole time I was out here, for pretty much the whole time, except for when he came out to pick carrots with me, Benjamin played in the sand, which is so awesome. It's so warm in there. I cannot wait for Samantha to wake up so she can she can see hers. I'll try, if I have a camera on me, I'll try to capture her reaction. Other than that, you guys, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Just so fun to get out here and do some things. It feels like spring. It's so weird. 
but awesome. I love it. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Do you love it? Yeah. Yeah. Ta -da! Ta -da! Ta -da! yeah. <laughs> you can take your I lid off. <laughs> Russell was eyeballing yours, bud. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh my goodness, look at that. So now the great thing you're rolling in your rolling pin? Oh, that's a cute rolling pin. Oh, oh look at that, that, Russell. Yes. Russell, you stay out. <laughs> you stay out, Russell. Oh. Oh, can you oh. see my bunny? Yeah. Oh, that's a devil that one one. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah.